Hi, welcome to PH Dizzle. My name is Alice Chang, and today I will be interviewing Alex Davis. Hello. Dr. Alex, and she got her PhD in genetics mm -hmm. from Stanford University, and now works in science communication. Tell me about what you did in your PhD. Sure, so my PhD was uh, focused on a disease called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So it's an overgrowth of the left ventricle of the heart, and so the heart can't properly pump blood out to the rest of the body. So because I was in the genetics program, I was trying to tackle this disease from a genetics perspective. And so it affects one in 500 people in the population, and most of the genes that have been associated with HCM are part of the cardiac sarcomere. So it's the smallest contracting unit of the heart muscle. So it's all the little proteins that are involved in actually making that contraction happen. My thesis work was sort of two-pronged. So half of my thesis work was focused on trying to create a therapeutic to try and target some of the uh, genes involved in HCM. So the idea is that in most patients they have one healthy copy of the gene and one unhealthy copy of the gene. And I was trying to create small genetic uh, mo therapeutic molecules that could turn off that unhealthy copy and just leave the healthy copy behind. And then the second prong of my PhD was trying to look at diagnosing uh, patients with HCM a little bit better. So sometimes we will sequence a person, we'll look at all of their genes, and in some cases we're able to say, okay, that mutation in that gene is what is causing your disease. But in other cases, we're not quite sure. We see a mutation and we're like, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, we're not quite sure. So I was doing work on trying to increase our ability to actually look at those mutations and say, yes, that one is more likely the one that's causing disease or it's not. Why is it so hard to find um, a mutation for a disease? Is it because there are, are there typically multiple mutations that lead up to a disease? Yeah, so we have a number of genes where we know that mutations in them can cause disease, but we haven't been able to do laboratory studies of every single mutation in every single gene. There are a number of really well-studied mutations that we know cause HCM, but there are also patients who just come in with these ones that we've never seen before, and we don't know, and we don't want to try and you know treat them for that mutation if it's actually just something that really isn't significant. Right. You worked for a long time in this in this scientific space, but now you've transitioned into science communication. I have. So tell me about, I mean, I guess there's still a science component, but like, how did you get involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. So I just love talking about science. <laughs> um, it's just my favorite thing. And I loved working in cardiovascular science, but throughout graduate school and even before, I had developed this YouTube channel where I got to talk with hundreds of thousands of people uh, about science and about the things that I loved. And for me in graduate school, that was a huge creative outlet that, you know, I loved working on my one really specific problem, but I also missed talking a bit about those bigger, broader issues in science. And also, you know, specific problems that just weren't specifically cardiovascular. So right. having this YouTube channel as an outlet for all the other cool stuff in science that I loved was really great for me creatively. And it also let me talk to scientists. I love talking about science and I it was my creative outlet for a long time, but now I'm trying to make it my full-time profession. So we are sitting on a boat right yes. now. What do you like to do for fun? Yeah, so I love getting outside and I love being near the ocean. So I grew up on the East Coast and then I moved out to the West Coast, so I've always been pretty near to the ocean and the water. And for a couple years after college, I volunteered at the New England Aquarium. Um, so I really sort of fostered this love of marine biology. And so I love going out whale watching and just being by the ocean. I really have a soft spot for Monterey Bay. That was where actually the genetics retreats at Stanford were held every year. So I spent a lot of time on the beaches there. And it's also where I went on my first whale watching tour. Ooh. So I have like marine biology uh, thoughts there too. But yeah, there's just so much cool stuff happening in the water around there that any chance I get, I love. I love being up in Monterey Bay. What's so, your favorite fish? So my favorite fish, I think, is probably a flounder. Uh, so <laughs> Good to eat. They're, they're great to eat, but they're also really cool because they start off when they're juveniles uh, with fish. Uh, they look like a normal fish, so they swim normally, and they have eyes on both sides. But then as they mature, one of the eyes will migrate over onto the other side. No. So that Yeah, so that they can lay flat like this, and they can bury themselves under the sand with just their eyes poking out. That's so awesome. that's sort of how they like hide from predators or how they find their prey. Uh, so I am, I am a fan of the flounder, which again is sort of a native New England fish. So I have yeah. a soft spot for it for that Stay as well. Roots. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> PH Dizzle. Having fun with smart people who do cool things.